Okay, so the next step would be adding an assignment. And so if I go on my left hand side here down to assignments and I click on it, you can see the heading is assignments and if I click on add, I can add a new assignment. So call it whatever, assignment one, I'm just going to call it plate tectonics, so give it a useful name, and you would add instructions here. So you could say read through and the reading that I've given and answer the questions. You could make an attachment here, so this would be if I expected the students to do a reading, I would um, click here and add it. You can also, I forgot up here, click on add on a pledge, so students would have to acknowledge that it is their own work. Open date, due date, and accepted till. So open date, um, obviously, whenever you want it open, due, and then accepted till. Um, this is quite useful just in case, like I've had before, students thought it uploaded and it didn't, and blah, blah, blah. And if you don't, if you set accepted to the due date, there's no flexibility. So if you set this for a few days after the due date, a sign will come up next to the student's name saying they did submit late, but they can still at least submit. So you would click here, you would choose your date, you can change it from different months, um, different days in the calendar, and then you've got to drag these tabs um, to change the time. You can see as I drag here, the time changes. That's the hours, and this is the minutes, and click done. Um, you can hide due date from students. I don't know why you would do that. You can add the due date to the calendar. So you can see up here there's a calendar tab and you would add it to that so students can see on the calendar. Okay, for um, the submission type, so inline only, attachment only, inline and attachment, non-electronic, single upload files only. So inline means there will literally be a box on the screen and students can type their assignment into that um, place. I remember the CLTD lady saying, turn it in doesn't work then. So you mustn't learn, use inline. So use either attachment only or single uploaded file only. So I would have always thought attachment only was the way to go because then students could upload a draft and if they do any changes, at least you can keep track of the different documents. Um, the CLTD lady actually said single uploaded file only is the best and that it just overwrites as they upload new stuff. Um, so she was concerned about this, and she said um, single uploaded files based because, oh, I can't even remember, something about Turnitin. So yeah, she recommended single uploaded. You're welcome to it, attachments only. I can't remember what the problem was about it. I think it had something to do with this down here, that if you do attachments only, and so student uploads two, and then you go down here and click standard paper repository. What happens is the first document they upload goes into Turnitin. And so the second document they upload gets checked against everything on Turnitin. And it obviously gets checked against their own work, which was the previous draft. And that causes issues. So she said to avoid all issues, keep it to single uploaded file only and keep this to none. But there must have been, there could have been another reason as well that I'm not remembering right now. So for simplicity, keep it, keep it as single uploaded file. Send one email per day summarizing notifications for student submission. I suppose that's to keep reminding them. If you want to use Turnitin, you would click here. Um, allow students to view report is always useful. Um, when submitting attachments, students should only use these file types. So it gives you all the file types. There is Word. There is PDF. Students should always save files with the appropriate extension. Submit papers to the following repository, none or standard paper repository. Um, I was told by a CLTD lady that you should keep it on none. So from what I understand, if you click here on standard paper repository, if the student submits the assignment, it will go into this paper, standard paper repository. If you then ask them to resubmit and will make corrections and resubmit, it will have a high uh, plagiarism score because it's comparing it to that previous submission, which was from them, um, which can get complicated. And so, I mean, the one thing you could do is do an assignment that is for the draft and say none. And then when you do the final submission, you could do standard paper repository so that your future students don't use this student's, student's assignment. The CLTD lady thought it might create quite a bit of confusion. So this is something to keep in mind. 
generate originally originality report, you can either do the report straight away when the student submit or only on the due date. Um, you can exclude by uh, what? bibliographic material from similarity index, um, in exclude quoted material, so anything in the biography or the quoted material. Um, I don't know if the, how thorough this is. I think there's sometimes been problems before. So if your students is finding that a reference is um, being flagged because it's the same as somewhere else, which is quite obvious, they'll just have to alert you to that and you'll have to look. Exclude small matches. <coughs> so the CLTD lady that I was speaking to said she wouldn't recommend um, selecting small matches. So I think this is the point here where so often I've done it myself. You would write your percentage and put in like 15% or 4%. Um, and I've had success with it in the past, but the lady at CLTD said sometimes there are glitches and it sets the student's percentage to zero. And I think I've seen that as well. Like some students will hand it in, they've got zero percent on turn it in. And I've also heard it might be a problem with PDFs. Um, that seems to ring a bell. And you're like, there's no way the student can have zero percent. And so this is the problem here with using this button. I would say the safer option is to tell the students, if you have over 10 percent, I will not accept it. And then they have to give you a report that shows it's under 10 percent. So I would say for safety measures, don't use this button. Um, and just the students have to give you proof that it's under the percentage that you want. Um, check the originality against Turnitin paper repository. So you can see this refers, ooh, I don't know if it's the same thing. But yeah, keep these checked because it's um, it's, well, that's the default current internet and journal. So this is what it's checking against. Uh, you can create what the grade is. So either letter grade, points, pass, fail, check mark. So points is quite useful. And then you would have to put like if it's out of 100, you would type it in there. Do not add assignment to gradebook or add assignment to gradebook. This is great. So if you do grade on Sakai, it will automatically load the marks into your gradebook. Release grade notification email options. So do you want to email the student saying the grade is released or do you, you don't want to? So the first one is you don't want to. Additional assessment options. No additional assist, uh, sorry, assignment options. Use peer assessment, group submission, one submission per group. You can check that. Also use peer assessment. So this is what, if I remember correctly, the CLTD lady said, peer assessment requires the assignment to use a point grading scale and cannot be used with a group submission. Okay, so you would set the due date and then you would set an evaluation period. So give one week for peers to evaluate. So anonymous evaluation is great. I think it also assigns students anonymously who they have to check and it won't release who checked your work. Allow students to re see reviews of their submissions. Um, I assume it's the students who submitted. Number of submissions student must review. So do you want them to review one other person's work or two? Instructions for reviewer here. Um, you could also look at group submissions. I won't go through that. You can add model answers if you want. Um, provide a model answer, provide an attachment, show to students before they start the assignment, after they submit, after submission is graded, after accept until date. Um, I'm going to close that. Private note, she said, uh, ICLTD lady said was more for your notes, yourself. All purpose item, I can't really remember. Information to be displayed at a specific time to whoever you choose. So... This information will either be applied. I've only got me as an instructor as an option. Maybe you could um, send this additional information to students. Okay, so you can preview it or then you could post the assignment and then it'll go out to the students. So that's how you would set up an assignment. Okay, I just wanted to show you what an example, well, an example of an assignment that's been turned in and that you can view the Turnitin report. So these are some assignments I did last year. You can see I had some Turnitin problems, so I had to duplicate the assignment. So this will come up. I could edit the assignment, although if it's past the due date, it's a bit hard. I'm going to view submissions. Um, I'm going to start recording again after click view submissions to ensure you don't see the students' um, names. Here, on the left-hand side, which you can't see on the screen, are all the students' names, the date that they've submitted. Um, the reason why some of mine say not submitted is because these were just the students that had problems with submitting. 
And so to view the turn in an assignment, I click on the flag. So green means they had a low enough percentage, yellow means there was a bit of a problem, it, and this is all relative to that value that I would have set under small um, correlations, but I advise that you don't uh, put it there. So you will have to go through and just double check all the percentages. If I put my mouse over this one, I think it said 19, so I can't, I was very lenient with this, um, because it was a very short essay, so it was, um, so I'm going to click here, and you'll see, it'll load the page. Okay, and so here's a student's assignment. You can see different words have been flagged, and I really find that students don't understand Turnitin. And so they will think that Turnitin is absolutely retarded because it has flagged Mid-Ocean Ridge. And I try and explain to them, it's not flagging Mid-Ocean Ridge. It is flagging everything in pink here, um, from this vertical line to this vertical line, in pink, labeled number two, that this whole section is extremely close to another reference. And again here, it is not flagging between the, it is flagging everything from this uh, purple line from number three to this side. And so it's not that you have to go rewrite between the, you have to go rewrite everything between these lines. And they do not understand that. And so obviously with the turn in report here, you can see the total value is 19 here. Um, and if you click below here, you can actually see the breakdown of what percentage was from where, and then um, it helps guide them a bit. You can actually in here create a rubric, and I did use it last time, but I must admit I couldn't figure out how to take the marks from here into the grade book, so I was maybe missing something there. Um, so yeah, this is what the Turnitin report will look like.